Hello everyone and welcome to Final Fight 2, probably the least loved game in the Final Fight series, but it's still pretty good. If there's something in particular to note about Final Fight 2, it's that it's a better console game than the original Final Fight. The original Final Fight had the distinction of being a pretty damn good port of an arcade game. Yeah, you could only have three enemies on screen at a time, but a lot of the brutality and difficulty was preserved perfectly. What I'm saying is that it really felt like a game that wanted to eat your quarters. You can take that as a backhanded compliment if you want, but it is what it is, that's what it was good at. Final Fight 2, on the other hand, feels a lot more like a game made for console. I don't want to give the impression that it's a cakewalk, but it's a lot more fair. The enemy placement is also much improved, due in part to the fact that there can now be more than three enemies on screen at a time. The game controls almost identically to the original Final Fight, though. And if there's much different in movement, I haven't noticed it yet. Obviously, there's a greater level of polish all around, not just in the graphics, but I, I think that can probably go without saying. If you could do something in the original Final Fight, you can do it here. That's the long and short of it. The characters are also reasonably similar to the three in the original Final Fight. Carlos here is basically Cody. Hagger is... he's still... he's still Hagger. And Maki is Guy. If you didn't pay any attention to the story, you could swap in the original Final Fight characters for their replacements, and you probably wouldn't even notice the differences. Sure, the animations are a little bit different, but it's... it's, uh, it's the same guy. It's the same thing. Carlos is just Cody. While we're talking about similarities between Final Fight 2 and the original Final Fight, people have complained that not too many things are different. And I mean, I guess they're right. It's just the original Final Fight, but reworked for console sensibilities, and I wanted that, so it's good with me. I would still prefer Mighty Final Fight any day, because Mighty Final Fight is the best Final Fight game. But this is good too. A little, uh, a little nitpick, a little catch, a little clause that comes with this game being made with console sensibilities in mind, though, is that you do have to complete the game on the hardest difficulty to get the real ending. And I hated that. I always hated that. It shouldn't be called Normal Mode if I can't get the full ending. Expert Mode should be called Pick This Difficulty to Get the Real Ending Mode. D just get it out of the way. I know you're trying to extend game length. I get that that's what that's for. But just just be honest with your co with your consumers. Two other beat-em-ups that I know of on the Super Nintendo and Genesis, Turtles in Time and The Punisher, also pull this. But whatever, you can't do anything about it, so you might as well adjust to the idea of completing the game on Expert. Right now we are playing on Normal Mode, don't worry about it, the game is more than playable on Expert. Because, you know, continues are a thing. But if you're just looking to have fun, I would recommend playing Normal Mode instead. We're getting all the general talk about the game out of the way early, just as we did with the original Final Fight. With the original Final Fight, there was a bit more to say, since it had a few firsts for the genre. But something we can mention about this game in general is that the stages are kinda long. This stage, for example, about 8 minutes. That's uh, really, really lengthy for a beat-em-up game. They wanted it to be a substantial experience, I get that. But I feel like people who aren't already enamored with the beat-em-up genre would have a really hard time playing through the whole thing. Not because it's bad, but because it's repetitious. I really like the game, and I think there's a lot of strategy to how you approach even the basic fights in it, but that wouldn't be readily apparent to people who aren't familiar with the genre. And it's not going to turn any heads like Streets of Rage. Streets of Rage had a lot going for it to get people interested in the genre. Above all else was style, but it also had a lot of good game design. Even though it lasted a whole eight stages, it still felt way less repetitious than Final Fight 2. And this game certainly isn't going to beat Final Fight 2 in the style department, you know? And that's fine, it has a more realistic aesthetic. Final Fight has always had a more realistic aesthetic to it. So anyway, about the game in a more, uh... in a more grounded sense. The best strategy I've found with fighting basic enemies is to stand just slightly above or below them and then start punching. This ensures they will either walk directly into your fist, or at least be in a position where they can't counterattack easily. If you try to attack them, yeah, they'll do that. They'll shove your, they'll shove their hand in your face. 
I guess just pretend you're fencing. The last thing you want to do is walk right up into their face and press the attack button. It may not even be noticeable how little I'm standing above or below them, but trust me, I'm not standing directly on the same plane as them, and that's really important. Weapon and item drops seem to work almost exactly the same as they did in Final Fight, which is to say certain crates drop certain types of items, but it's never a guarantee that they'll drop anything. Thankfully, this time we got a board. And the weapons in Final Fight, just like in the first game, make things a lot easier. In Final Fight, it was very easy to beat enemies down into a corner with any given weapon, and it's the same case here. Except for the knife. This board is also going to help us immensely with containing the first boss, though I still mess up on another front. Oh, this seems like a good time to mention. In the options menu, there's an option called Extra Joy, and if you turn it on, you can map the Desperation Attack to the X button. This boss is Wan Wan, and he considers the entire harbor here his territory. And all of the gangs even recognize that, so you know he's fearsome. Above all, he really seems to enjoy cooking, though. Which is presumably why his original character model had a cleaver, which is uh, missing in the American release. Presumably because the characters could bleed when hit with it. Unfortunately for Wan Wan, just like normal enemies, he's very easy to beat down into the corner with a board. Now we do still want to stand above or below him when we do this, because standing directly in front of him, he does reach farther than our board with his fists. Aside from his long-ass muscular arms, he does have one, one attack we should worry about, and that was it right there. He doesn't seem to use it during any specific period of time, it's just whenever he feels like it. You can move out of the way in time, but it's so accurate that I instead recommend using the Desperation Attack to knock him out of the air. And if you don't have a weapon handy, the best way to attack him is to come at him from above or below. Because he has a very hard time attacking you when you do that. It is also worth noting that you need to time the Desperation Attack properly to become invincible. And the biggest culprit to messing this up is pressing the button too early. I've done that a few times.